Hello everyone, Farah Hanoun here and I'm joined by Olivier Aubin-Mercier who takes on Alex Hernandez, July 28th, UFC on Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Olivier, how are you? I'm good, and you? Doing good, good. How's it going? How's your day been? Uh, pretty hard day of training. It was my, uh, uh, my big sparring today, so uh, I have one more like this and, uh, and then the big day is going to come up. Yeah, I was going to ask you, with only a couple of weeks to go uh, to your fight, uh, do you start toning things down now that you're just a couple of weeks away? I mean, how do you usually go about it in your training camps? Yeah, normally uh, next week it's going to be a little bit lighter. And uh, the last week is going to be uh, even uh, even uh, more lighter. So, uh, yeah, I'm starting to go down right now and uh, recuperate. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's my plan uh, for now. And what's your weight cut usually like? Do you have a tough time going down to 55? Uh, last time, a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was uh, my worst uh, weight cut uh, my last fight. Oh, okay. So, uh, so this time I, I tried uh, not to do the same. And uh, right now I'm really, really happy with my weight. Uh, so it's going to be uh, going to be easy, I think, this time. So uh, I can knock on wood anyway. But uh, uh, it's probably going to be easy. And uh, what do you feel like you did wrong last time? And what, do you feel, what, what are you going to do to make sure you don't make the same mistake? Uh, well, last time I, I was supposed to have a fight against uh, Brazilian too, but what is his name? Uh, uh, well, uh, anyway, I was supposed to have a fight with a uh, with dude and uh, the, the guy was too, too heavy. You're talking about Gilbert Burns, right? Yeah, exactly. Gilbert yeah. Burns. Yeah. Forgot his name. Uh -huh. And uh, so what happened is that I was on weight on that training camp, and then when they told me that uh, I didn't have a fight, uh, I started eating uh, normally again. And uh, they kind of told me uh, last minute for my fight against uh, my my other uh, opponent. Yep. So. Uh, so that, I think that's the reason, like, my, my weight got up, got down, got up, got down, and uh, it was just a little bit harder. I mean, I, I, I lost a little bit more water than normally I do, so, uh, but it was not, like, terribly bad. It was just uh, annoying, I would say. I see, I see, and uh, what are your thoughts on, uh, I mean, they talk about the early weigh-ins and all that, and Dana talking about how he wants to take them away. What's your stance on it? Are you for the early weigh-ins, or you don't mind going back to the old 4 p.m. format? No, uh, I hate the old p.m. format. Uh -huh. uh, I think what's stupid. Yeah, I think it's so dumb. <laughs> uh, so I like the, the early uh, weigh-in. Uh, yeah. It may be harder for people that, lose a lot of weight but I guess if if you can make that uh, an early way and like uh, maybe you should be at 55 yeah because I'm, I'm surprised I mean everybody seems to like this new early way and so I don't I mean I know statistically people are missing weight with this new format but literally every single person I've spoken to likes this format so it'll be pretty crazy considering it's you guys that go through the weight cut for the decision to be made against your will, if you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I know I heard some talk about uh, they want to do the early way in and give the option to the athlete to the, the PM too. Yeah. Uh, I think that would be fair. I think that that would be the the, the, the best uh, the best way to do it. But um, I don't know. I think. I don't think people miss more weight than before. I think it's just uh, that the early way and it's uh, all electronic. The way is electronic. Uh, like it's so it's such a small place that uh, you, there's no you can can have any mistake. And uh, before it was not the electronic uh, scale too. So I, I think it can play on, on that. Maybe maybe before people were were not really doing their weight, but Anyway, that, that's a thought. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we'll see anyway in the next couple of events, but it seems like they're sticking with it for now, but we'll see. Let's talk about your fight. You're opening the main card 
on a stacked Fox card. You're taking on Alex Hernandez, a main card full of former champs and top-ranked fighters. Does that add anything special for you, having perhaps more eyes on the event? Nah. I'm just happy to fight in Canada. Uh. Do you prefer... I don't care who's fighting after me. <laughs> All right, and do you prefer fighting in Canada over the U.S.? Yeah, of course. Uh, for I'm... me, it's easier for the, the taxes. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. Because, I mean, the, the advantage, <laughs> I guess, of the U.S. is more eyes uh, on you, like, around the world. But this Canada card is amazing, right? I mean, it's pretty much almost like fighting the U.S. They really did Canada good with this card. Yeah, I think so. I think they, they own uh, a good card in Canada, and uh, uh, it's pretty much an international uh, fighting card, so that's, that's really great. Uh, we are not that, that many fighters from Canada, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, well, the, the card is just great, and uh, I think it's going to be a great uh, night of fight. Definitely. Let's talk about your fight. Alex Hernandez, a newcomer that made quite the debut when he scored a knockout victory over a very talented Benil Dariush. Did you watch his debut? And if so, what did you think of his performance? Uh, I watched his debut, but uh, a little bit later of the fight. Um, and it was impressive, actually. He, he, I, I think uh, Darius did a little bit fake and... Uh, take him lightly. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we all know Darius is like the, the most dense guy in the division. So, uh, I think against a crazy guy like a uh, crazy person like uh, Alex uh, Arnesa, you can't do that. You have to be ready. Um, so, yeah, I think he's, a, he's kind of a mystery man. Uh, and he likes to go hard, so just know that he's a, he's a crazy person. He's a, he's a good ass. Are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you see the, the beginning of the fight? There was like a little bit of a controversy because he like went for the touch glove, but he didn't and he went straight at it and he got a lot of hate. I feel like a lot of attention was put on his debut, not because only he knocked out uh, a very good Benil Dariush, but also because of the whole touching gloves thing. Did you pay attention? Did you see that? And do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, for some reason, he really hates touch gloves. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe it's uh, when he was a kid, he got from a side or something. <laughs> I'm not sure. But, uh, I mean, it's okay. He, he's a bad guy. You want to play the bad guy. I want to play the good guy, so... It's going to be a fun fight, I think, uh, on July 28th. Uh, that's what we want, right? The story behind it. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I, and is it difficult to analyze him or break him down, considering that he's only had one fight in the UFC and a very quick one at that? I mean, have you seen any of his past fights uh, before the UFC? Or are you a kind of guy that likes to watch tape, or do you leave that to your coaches? Yeah, I leave that to my coaches, uh, so I watch a little bit how he moved just to uh, just to visualize a little bit. So yeah. I just watched the fight against Darius uh, and the rest my uh, my head coach. Um, I think the hard part with uh, El Dante is too is uh, that it's pretty tough to find a guy that can mimic him. I mean, like I said, he's a pretty person. Um, so it's, it's hard to find a training partner that uh, fights like him. And how was, how has your training camp been? Uh, who are the guys that you've been training for in this uh, during this training camp? Oh, well, you know, the uh, other guy from TriStar. That's a great thing about TriStar. There is the, the core uh, training partner, and then there is always a guy from outside uh, Canada or outside TriStar that, that come and those people are really high level, so I train with a lot of uh, softball, I train with a lot of uh, art product, uh, a lot of good guy on the ground, a lot of good wrestlers, so no, it was really a great, uh, a great training camp, I really like this training camp too, it was fun. I saw that you posted a picture with George St. Pierre, how much have you been able to train with him during this training camp, and how much has he been at the gym, because I know he's 
uh, whether he's been active in the UFC or not, he's kind of always at the gym, right? Yeah, he's always at the gym. He's giving the Monday class, actually. Uh -huh. uh, so he helped, he, he helped me on Mondays. Um, I didn't have the chance to roll too much with him the, this time. But uh, he helped me a lot with uh, a lot of uh, a lot of technique in, uh, for my upcoming fight. So, yeah, no, George is always there. He's always there for uh, his training partner. Great, great. And how do you expect this fight to play out? You're a very strong grappler, but your striking has been improving so much. You scored your first TKO in the last fight. So are you planning on showing off more of your improved striking? Well, I think I, I won't have a choice. Uh, I think I really have to be alert on the, on the feet. So, like I said, Hernandez, the, the crazy person is really dangerous, but uh, he, he still have a, a lot of hole in his game. Uh, the kid is young, and um, he, I think he needs to improve a little bit again. But anyway, I got, I got to show him uh, that's a real uh, martial artist. I see, I see. And he's ranked at number 13. He's only had one fight, one win in the UFC, but he's ranked at number 13. Are you hoping a win would put you in the lightweight rankings? Uh, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Okay. What would you say, like, when, when you approach fights, uh, so you don't care about the rankings, is it just about fighting the toughest guys out there? Because lightweight division is such a stacked division. Yeah, exactly. I think the lightweight is the... Uh, the best uh, weight division right now. I think the top 30 uh, are really, really, really good. Uh, so now we see uh, the hangman that uh, Dan Hooker. Yeah. Really impressive. This guy is really impressive. Uh, people from Europe are really impressive right now, actually. Uh, there's the other guy. I don't remember his name. Just uh, CB. Anyway, I don't remember his name. I, I'm really bad with name, and I <laughs> I don't find other people in my category actually. Um, but yeah, I don't care about the uh, about the ranking. I, well, I just want to fight. I see. And a couple more questions before I let you go. Uh, Reebok released a Canadian gangster T-shirt for you with the mustache, the fanny pack. How cool is that to have your own personalized T-shirt? Well, it's awesome, but. I mean, it was only natural. <laughs> People want it, so why not? And now, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have a surprise uh, next next week. Oh. Uh, I got some uh, personal fanny pack too. No way. So, Re Reebok or your own? Yeah. Talk? Oh, Reebok. Very cool. Can you give us like an idea of what yeah. the design is gonna be like, or is this a surprise for next week? Yeah, I gotta show it next week, and uh, let me tell you, it's gonna be fun. That's awesome because the, the the fanny pack is becoming suddenly the the it thing. I see a lot more people walking around in it, and you're one of those guys that's kind of uh, pushing that fashion statement. Yeah, what the heck? I start having a fanny pack, and then everybody is having a fanny a fanny pack. I don't know. <laughs> I think people want to be more like the Canadian gangster now. Yes, I mean, are you starting to feel like the fans are connecting with you more lately? You're on a nice win streak. You fought multiple times outside of Canada. You're a pretty funny guy, a character, always beloved by the Canadian fans. But are you starting to feel that fans from the U.S. and all over the world are rooting for you and supporting you? Yeah, I think so. I receive a lot of uh, positive messages. I mean, um, when this Canadian gangster thing came out, I'm uh, sure I was going to get some uh, so much aid, but no, it's mostly positive. And uh, the fans are really funny. I mean, <laughs> I have a lot of fun with that thing. I would have. <laughs> you said you have a lot of stories. But, uh, what you said? I said, did you say you have a lot of stories with the fans? No, uh, I mean like. It's, I'm trolling them and they're trolling, trolling me. I think, oh, I think okay. they are really funny. Yeah. I, think, I, I right. think it's really, really funny. Yeah, I mean, definitely, because you're showing that it you don't have to be the, the, the bad guy, the trash-talking guy. You don't have to go out of character and try to be this uh, kind of bully and mean guy that a lot yeah, of people are exactly. trying to... Yeah, you're just, you're embracing it. You're being yourself. 
Yeah, that, that's it. I mean, that's that's who I am. And, um, I think in the era that people are, have trouble of laughing at themselves, uh, I think it's a it's a good little touch right now for the US. Definitely, and uh, you can't remove the mustache now, right? Because it's part of who you are. It's your identity. So you you can't remove it, right? Yeah, I still have it. Like I said, if I don't have a fight, the gangster is going away for a short period of time. But as soon as I have a fight, the stash is coming up, coming back, and getting the story. It's back to. Did you ever imagine that this mustache would like be a part of your like kind of like your character? Did you ever imagine you'd have so much uh, uh, like you say en français succès with the, with your mustache? Did you think it was gonna be this thing? Well, you know what? I did it for a joke, <laughs> and I look at myself in the mirror, and I was like, "Wow, that's a good looking man." And yeah, for sure, I knew that there was going to be so. so much talk about the moustache. I mean, like, how great the, the, the this look? It look great on me. That's why. <laughs> and and now you have Mursad Bektik as well. Did, did he take that off you, or what's going on there? I have the what? Mursad Bektik. Uh, he's also got that moustache. Yeah. yeah, I have to say, like, my mine is super glorious, <laughs> but but Mursad. That is like the manliest thing I saw for a long time. <laughs> uh, this is so great, and I mean, there's there's Mirsa, there's uh, Arnie. Yes, Arnie. Yes. Uh, yeah, man. The a lot of people have a mustache right now in a TriStar. That's why we we changed the name for TriStar, and I think it uh, it fits well. Definitely, but not all of them have their mustache like on a t-shirt so you you get that over them yeah 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 i'm a i'm a little bit ahead of them say. <laughs> definitely well olivia one more question before i let you go how do you see this fight with uh hernandez playing out how do you get the job done uh i think it's gonna be a, a tough tough fight i think uh Maybe second round uh, KO. Oh, look That's at you. That's how I see it. Look at you. You're, you're like, you've embraced the, the striker role now. You've got your first TKO and now you're going for the KO. There's no more submission. Yeah, no. You know what? People like KO. You don't like the people who choke somebody out. <laughs> Definitely. Well, Olivier, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Best of luck, July 28th. It's a fantastic card. Olivier is opening up the main card when he takes on Alex Hernandez. Live on Fox. Olivier, thank you so much for your time and best of luck. Thank you so much.